my name's Bob German. I work with partners a lot here. I'm I'm a uh, partner technical architect at Microsoft, and so I'm always I've been working a lot on Teams applications lately, and a lot of the partners I work with uh, don't have a lot of developers, and so they're looking for those low code kinds of solutions, and. Um, I was kind of inspired into this whole direction by uh, at the Teams airlift seeing Caruana Gatomo show um, this feature, which is it's just a, a, a link here in the Teams sidebar that opens up the learning pathways SharePoint site. So this is just a, an amazing training capability, and um, you know a, a lot of great work that went into this. Uh, but the it's a SharePoint site that gets uh, provisioned by the SharePoint provisioning engine. Um, and here's how it works inside of Teams. So what she did here is actually really pretty simple, right? Uh, Teams has a manifest just like SharePoint framework. And you can see here that um, it's this, this particular solution has some static tabs in it, right? And then we're just taking those static tabs, uh, we're installing this, going into the uh, Teams administration portal, and I, I guess I'm, maybe I'll take the time to show this or not, but um, actually coming in here to app policies and pinning that up there for everybody. Um, and I'm not, I'll am not. i go back to that if I have time, but I'm just going to stay quick. A couple other examples, though. It's like, well, why couldn't you use this for any SharePoint page so that everybody who knows how to build SharePoint pages could use this kind of a technique? Um, it works great for SharePoint Framework, which is which we love, but is not friendly for the low-code developers, right? What if I wanted to do this with Outlook? Well, Outlook integration is coming, um, but here's a here's a quick and dirty uh, version of it. What if I wanted to use this with a Power App? I'm not a Power Apps person. Can you tell? This is a really the maybe the ugliest Power App ever, but notice that it's working inside of here, and I can just pin this to my UI or I could uh, actually publish this out using app policies to everybody. So this all works pretty well at just as it is, but notice that these are static tabs. Static tabs are only visible in what they call personal view, which is these uh, things that are on your toolbar, uh, on your sidebar, or here in the little pop-up. And um, if you wanted to put a tab inside of a, um, uh, a team or or a group chat, right? And and here's here's another example, by the way, just a SharePoint homepage, right? Anything, a list could be useful in this context, right? Um, and, and sort of make an app out of it. Maybe I want to actually add that to a team. So the problem is that if you want to go into what's called a configurable tab, or if you want to go into a group chat or a team rather than just this one-on-one -on -one user kind of personal view, you need to create something called a configurable tab. And that configurable tab requires a configuration page, which requires code. So let me uh, show you an example. If I go here into, um, well, actually, let me show you the little open source sample. So um, in order to open this up to low code developers who maybe aren't going to want to write the configuration code to do this, um, I created this little sample web part, and you can put this web part on any modern SharePoint page and turn the SharePoint page into a configuration page that works in Teams. So um, it's it's really simple. You could go quite a bit fancier than this, but right now it just gives a set of choices of what do I want to show. So here I've got two choices, one per line. Uh, each tab needs to have a unique ID called an entity ID and each one has a URL. I also have this little feature here, which is to redirect pages, uh, tabs back through this page, which means whenever anybody clicks on one of those tabs, rather than go directly to this URL, it will go back to this page with a web part on it, which will send it along its way and give me the ability to change the URL later on down the road if I want to. Um, so what I can now do is take this um, URL here of the configuration page that I've just created. And this time I'm going to, instead of manually editing the, um, the Teams manifest, I'm going to use a tool called App Studio, Teams App Studio. And here's, here's a little SharePoint tabs app. And inside of there, 
I've just pasted this URL to that configuration page, right? So I've got a couple personal tabs here. These really don't have anything to do with my demo. Um, they would they actually work here underneath of uh, this personal uh, experience. But I want to show the the, configura the configuration tabs. So um, I've got my Web part set up on a page. I've got the page URL as my team tab. Now, if I go to test and distribute this, I can install it from here and I can put this into a team or into a group chat. So let me pick a team and I'll just go ahead and put this into the amazing project team, set up the tab. And what will happen is teams will open up the configuration page and as it does it, it's actually going to show my web part here on that little page. So I can pick, let's look at the autonomous vehicles. We'll put that in there as a tab and um, save that. And this is really only like five lines of code inside that does the configuration. Most of the code, and it's, there's not a lot of code, most of the code is just giving the user the choices and stuff, but even that's not very much. Uh, note that I can also come back here now and change the settings on this tab, and I go back to that same configuration experience. No, I really want the research page on here, please. And uh, that changes the page, but not the name of the tab. Um, is just kind of, that's a different function here. So I can do that manually. So that's really it. I mean, there's not a lot there except for I feel like this could be extremely powerful for um, low-code developers. I've written a couple of blog articles on this, on how to get started <clears throat> with all the details of uh, how to set up the learning pathways and then how to use this uh, new configurable web part to build these kinds of solutions into uh, group chats and teams. So that's it, and maybe I took less than 10 minutes giving the other demos more time. I knew this would be a simple one. Great, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, very informative. Sometimes in this in this world of SharePoint, you find yourself writing these little pieces of glue code, right? And this is a perfect example. It's just this little piece of glue code that opens up a whole set of scenarios for people who don't, uh, don't want to open up, uh, start coding in SharePoint framework themselves. And I have to say, Vesa here from my side, that that's, that's a great example of the simplicity of surfacing SharePoint specific capabilities as an application in Teams, because Teams isn't kind of an application host. And this, this shows how simple it is actually to surface individual applications and, and functionalities there. Plus the fact that now after Ignite 2019, we, we support uh, the private apps and, and you can easily make those things happen as well. So really, really cool stuff. Yeah, thanks. Thank you.